Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer Deck Tech, and today we're going to be talking about Selesnia Cats. I'm very excited to bring this list to you, but before we hop into the video, a couple things we have to go over. So the first thing is, if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, just let me know in the comment section below. And what do you think about the deck? Is there a card that I definitely should have included? I know there was a lot of really, really cool cats that I did not put into the deck, even though they were definitely very, very playable. So let me know if you have differing opinions on the cards that were featured in this video. And the last thing I have to mention, huge shout out, I'm sorry if I mispronounced this, to Meslowski, who recommended we do a cat video for Pioneer. I know about a year ago, we did a modern cat video, but surprisingly, the difference between modern and Pioneer cats is pretty big, mostly because of like the different one drops, you get extra lords in modern, that kind of thing. So overall, it's a little bit different style of deck. So thank you for recommending the deck, Meslowski. Let's go ahead and hop into it here. All right. So these are some of our early drops that we're playing, which is not really surprising to a certain extent. So our one drops we're playing four Sacred Cat and four Leon and Vanguard. We're also playing four Ajani's Pride Mate. So yes, Ajani's Pride Mate, technically, there's like a slightly better option. It's the uh it's like the spirit cleric um that kind of gets upside the more counters it gets. But guess what? This is a cat, so it's gonna get all the buffs for our deck. So it's pretty much just better than that one in general. And Sacred Cat and Leon and Vanguard work really, really well with Ajani's Pride Mate. The one thing that's really awkward for cats, and I've been talking about this for a long time, maybe not so much on the channel, but we need to get some two power cats, like cats that are always two power. Obviously, Leon and Vanguard, you know, if you have more creatures, it gets the plus and plus one. So it can be a two two, which is pretty sweet, but you know, it's not really good on defense because it's at the beginning of combat on your turn. So these are the best one drop cats that we have to work with, and they're overall, they're still pretty solid. Next slide here, we have some of our good three drops and my personal favorite card in the deck, Fleece Main Lion. I love Fleece Main Lion. We're playing four copies of it. It's just good stats. Three, three for two. Obviously, late game, we have the monstrosity ability. And if this thing becomes monstrous, I mean, it's unkillable. I mean, other than like farewell and like the exile effects it's pretty much just it, there's no way to really get rid of fleece main lion so very very sweet one thing that's really funny for those who have not played fleece main lion or played against it when you get to uh when you get to the monstrosity ability it pretty much turns into like a game of chicken because then your opponent they want to keep up removal for it and you want to keep up mana for it so it's like this really really weird game so if you're playing fleece main lion and your opponent, if they are tapped out, like they don't have a response, monstrous it right away. Like, believe me. Like, obviously, so there are some scenarios, obviously, if you're going for like lethal or whatever, obviously don't do that. But like, I'm telling you, when you can make this thing monstrous and your opponent like cannot answer it for sure, just do it. You got to make it monstrous because it is awesome having an X proof and indestructible creature. We're also playing two Kutzil Malamut Exemplar. Obviously, you know, because of the thumbnail, of course we were going to be playing Kutzil. 3-3 three, three for 3, your opponents can't cast spells during your turn, which is a very, very sweet effect. Whenever one or more creatures you control, each with power greater than its base power, deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So, it might seem a little weird on the wording, but essentially, so it's power greater than its base power. So, for instance, if we're playing uh cats and we have a feline sovereign in play that's giving our cats plus one plus one that would trigger the cutsel draw so that's kind of the idea which guess what we're playing a lot of lords in this deck so most of the time we're going to be triggering this very 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 easily also works with leon and vanguard just because it gets plus one plus one with the combat trigger it's very sweet uh the one reason to really play this card though is your opponents can't cast spells during your turn this is super good obviously our opponent can't play wandering emperor they can't like fatal push any of our creatures they can't do anything on our turn obviously they can activate an ability but they can't cast any spells which is pretty sweet so definitely a huge fan of cutsil and we're also playing four copies of feline sovereign it's one of the lords that we are playing in our deck obviously given pulse plus one is sweet protection from dogs largely not going to be relevant unless our opponent like is trying to block with a muta vault other than that that's just it's really just flavor and then whenever one of our cats you control deal combat damage to a player destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls which is definitely a pretty solid effect having a naturalized effect on a lord is pretty solid so definitely a huge fan of feline sovereign but we still have a couple more lords we have to talk about. We're playing two Kahira the Orphan Guard. So, yes, we are playing it as a companion, but it's one of the few 
uh, well, I don't want to say few, but it's one of the companions that you can also play as a companion and in your deck, just because each creature card has to be either a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast, and obviously we're playing all cats, so it's not a problem. 3-2 Vigilance gives our other cats, and you know, whatever, but mostly the cats, plus one, plus one, and Vigilance, so definitely very, very sweet, big fan of Kiara in the deck. We're also playing four Regal Caracal. This card is really sweet. I loved this card in the original Amonkhet block, especially in Standard. It was just a really, really cool card. Gives our other cats 1-1 and lifelink, and when it enters, we make two 1-1 cats with lifelink. So definitely a huge fan of the card. And for those who maybe not have might not have picked that up we're not playing collected company in this deck mostly because there's not quite enough cat lords to really make it work and regal Carcal is a sweet card i mean it's a lord that makes two other dudes when it enters just a huge huge fan of regal Carcal. and the last side we have to talk about before we talk about our lands we're playing four get loss as our main source of removal for the most part in the deck and then we're also playing four asika's chariot it itself is not a cat but it does make two cats when it enters, which is just, it's just a really, really good effect. And then obviously when it attacks, create a token that's a copy of target creature, to oh, sorry, of target token you control. It's not just creature tokens, technically any token with crew four. A Seeker's Cherry is really good. Comes with two cats. It itself is a body that we can crew and attack. And it's just, it's just a really, really good effect. So that's why we're playing four Asika's Chariots. So let's go and hop into the lands here real quick. So the land base is, I would say a, relatively standard green white um mana base except we got a couple spicy cards so we're playing four razor virtue they get four temple guard and four oh sorry two brush lands we're also playing four branch loft pathway as our main dual lands obviously we got the aganjo and the besiege you featured as well they're free we're obviously going to play them we're also playing two cavern of souls two mutavaults and the little bit of spice is the animal sanctuary so Cavern is pretty straightforward, makes our cats uncounterable. Mutable is good because when we animate it, it's a cat. It's it's every creature type. So it gets all the bonuses from our cats. And then Animal Sanctuary is a little spicy. Is it 100% practical for the deck? Probably not. But it's just funny. Obviously, two mana tap, put a woman counter on target. Bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, or snake. And again, we're going to be putting this on cats pretty much the entire time. It's a little bit of a mana sink, just kind of something to do if we have some extra mana. It's just, a, it's just a cool card. Who doesn't like Animal Sanctuary? And then rounding out our mana base, we're playing two planes and one forest. So I'm pretty sure I featured these exact same lands on our original cat video. But obviously, we're a cat deck. We got to have some cat-themed lands. So the planes is from Amonkhet. Obviously, you have Oketra in the background, which is kind of like, has like the head of like a cat for the most part, so that's why we're playing the planes there. And then the forest is the Alana Danner uh, Jumpstart Forest. Obviously, you got like the cheetah kind of in the bottom right there, which is really, really cool. This one is actually the cat-specific uh, Jumpstart Land, which I feel like I talk about the Jumpstart Lands every other video. I love the artwork in them. Like, I just love how they're unique. They've only been printed in the Jumpstart set, which is really, really cool. So definitely a huge fan of the forest. So, don't go anywhere yet. We still have to talk about our sideboard as well as some budget options for the deck. So sideboarding is going to be really, really simple with this deck. So another thing I mention this pretty much in every video is don't be afraid to change the sideboard depending on what your local metal looks like. So we're going to want some graveyard hate. Rest in peace is by far and away the best option. You can get them about, about you know, you can get them for about one US dollar piece. It's fantastic. We're going to want a few protection spells with the amount of removal that's going around in the format and with Rakdos Vampires being really good. I would personally recommend Surge of Salvation as a fantastic way to protect all of our creatures. And one thing that's cool is with Vein Ripper. Vein Ripper actually targets with the um, Drain ability. So if you have Surge of Salvation, it's kind of the perfect card for the most part. So definitely a huge fan of Surge of Salvation in the sideboard. We're going to want some extra removal. I would personally recommend, I mean, like, you know, you can play like Portable Hole for like smaller creatures and permanents is really, really good. Technically, I guess I would count Pick Your Poison just because it's Artifact Enchantment Hate. And then also, you know, with Vein Ripper or if our opponent's playing just, you know, Flyers in general, make them sacrifice a creature with Flying. Definitely a huge fan of Pick Your Poison. If you don't have some of those, I highly suggest picking them up. It's probably one of the best sideboard cards in green in the format right now. And then the last thing to mention is Kahira. We are playing Kahira as our companion which is really sweet so which is nice we don't have any non 
cat elemental nightmares or whatever that are coming into the deck so we can always reveal kahira just make sure you don't forget you know every so often like i'm playing a companion i'll forget to reveal it and then i'll be like oh god i forgot to reveal it and i maybe could have won the game or at least you know stayed alive that kind of thing so don't forget to reveal your kahira when you're playing this deck and the last thing we have to go over is the budget options which i'm going to be honest with you is a very very easy deck to uh make budget friendly so obviously you have the budget dual lands which um for the first time which i've never actually done this before i have the regular deck list in the description below as well as a budget option or slash alternative so if you want to check out the budget option it's also in the deck list it's also sorry the deck list is in the description below but i decided to put in a bunch of the gain life lands to work with the johnny's pride mate for the budget dual lands so obviously you could play like the temples and you could play um i'm trying to think of other budget dual lands but anyways you know which ones i'm talking about um you know sun petal grove but i also decided to play blossoming sands and then the uh Oh gosh, I feel terrible. The courtyard, the Cabaretti's courtyard, just because it gains the life. Again, works really, really well with the Johnny's Pride Mate. But anyways, I'm rambling on about budget dual lands. Now, Faithful Absence is also a fantastic budget option. Get Lost, you know, they go for a couple bucks a piece here. Faithful Absence is like maybe a dollar, not even. And it's almost it's almost just as good so if you're looking for a good budget alternative removal spell faithful absence is personally what i would recommend the last thing i want to mention is if you play the budget deck it's easily under fifty dollars most of the cats are not very pricey i think the most pricey cat is the regal cargles they go for about a buck 25 buck 50 a piece so that's really really not that much um but the current list as it's built right now is 290 dollars which I know that sounds like a lot, but once you take out the caverns and the Basajus and the Aganjos and the Temple Gardens, this deck is extremely cheap. All of the cats that are featured in this video are all extremely cheap. I mean, Asika's Chariot, technically, I guess, if we count that as a cat, is like three US dollars a piece, which really isn't that bad. So once you get all the cats, just throw in some budget dual lands, and then you know if you're looking to upgrade the deck as time goes on, you know, maybe pick up some caverns or some branch loft pathways and some temple gardens, and then eventually you can get to the point where you know it's technically 100% tuned, that kind of thing. But the budget version is still just as good. We got to play all of the same creatures pretty much for the most part in the budget deck, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So that takes us to the end of the video here. Thanks so much for watching. The deck lists are in the description below if you'd like to check it out. And before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to shout out our channel members, Ralph and Matt, for being channel members. It's only $1 a month, and you get uh, access to the exclusive Discord as well as other channel features, which is really, really sweet. But let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the deck? Is there something uh, that I forgot to include in this deck? I know there were some really, really cool cats that unfortunately didn't make the cut, but just let me know in the comment section below if there's a card that I forgot. So I'm Commander Crane. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.